Hi, I'm Brad Scott. I'm the Volcano Surveillance Coordinator for Genius Science. So I basically had the responsibility for monitoring the active volcanoes in New Zealand. In New Zealand we basically have three types of volcanoes. Our classical cone volcanoes, this, like Egmont, Narahoe, Ruapehu, White Island. They're what people perceive as a volcano. It looks like a volcano crater at the top of it. Our other volcanoes are calderas. And now globally we have some of the best examples and these are the super volcanoes of the world. And our third type of volcano in New Zealand is our volcanic field. These are small volcanoes, just erupt once, and the best known examples of those are in Auckland. So we have our three volcano types. Now our cone volcanoes, our traditional looking volcanoes, the characteristics of these guys is they erupt frequently. They have lots and lots of small eruptions. For example, Ruapehu has been active for somewhere in the order of 240 to 270,000 years. So every 5, 10 years, small scale eruption, every 40 or 50 years, a little bit bigger eruption. But as volcanic eruptions go, they're still at the small end of the scale. And one of the ways that we differentiate volcanoes is the size of their eruptions. So our cone volcanoes, they erupt up to maybe about one tenth of a cubic kilometre of material. Our second style of volcanism in New Zealand are the calderas. Now, in contrast to the cones, these don't erupt very often. They erupt maybe every one or two thousand years, and every sort of fifty or a hundred thousand years, they have a really enormous eruption. But the magnitude of these eruptions is all large. They start off at about one cubic kilometre. They typically average somewhere around five or ten cubic kilometres, and they can go up to fifty. 100 or even 500 cubic kilometres of material. The good news is these are really, really rare. Yes, they're in the geological record. The chances of us experiencing one is very low, but they are there. And some of the best examples of these are like Rotorua Basin. The actual whole basin of Rotorua is the Caldera Volcano, 15, 20 kilometres in diameter. Taupo is another example, both filled up by lakes, they're big topographic depressions. Our third style of volcano is our volcanic fields. Our best example is in Auckland. These are what we call monogenetic volcanism. This is where the volcano erupts once. So the volcano comes into eruption, it builds a small volcanic cone, there's some ash fall, there's some lava flows, and there's some other, maybe some blasts, etc. around the volcano. And then the volcano just quietens down, dies away, and the next eruption is a totally new location. And so we have volcanic fields in Auckland, in Whangarei and in the Bay of Islands. We've got these three different types of volcano in New Zealand, but, but generically they're all similar. The, the way a volcano works and the way we monitor a volcano is based on how the volcano works. So we have hot molten material at depth underneath the volcano, that's the heat source. As that material moves into the volcano to a shallower depth or the volume changes, that has to create a space for itself. So it, it may break some rocks around it that'll generate earthquakes. As the molten material moves, it makes noise in its own right, the gas bubbles are expanding and collapsing. So that's making sort of noise that we can see on our seismographs. That's by far our best tool for monitoring the volcanoes. As it comes closer to the surface, it's going to start changing the shape of the ground surface and we'll get ground deformation. The ground may bulge up. So we look at geodesy or measuring the shape of the ground and there we use a variety of techniques. It might be traditional surveying, levelling or triangulation, and more recently we're using GPS technology to give us real-time record of how the ground is changing shape. That hot material also comes into contact with our groundwater system, and that generates our geothermal systems. So then we start looking at the chemistry of the hot water around the volcano and the gases associated with it. So though it doesn't matter whether it's a cone or a caldera, or a volcanic field. The properties of how the volcano works are all very similar. And so our volcano monitoring program is based around looking at the three things, the seismicity, the geodesy or ground deformation, and water and gas chemistry.